today we're going to be presenting uh, <coughs> the Son Jarocho, traditionally from Veracruz. And Jose Alberto Rincón is a junior in psychology with a minor in Spanish. And he is very interested in developing this as part of his cultural background and also academic studies. So welcome, Jose Alberto Rincón. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Uh, so yeah, we're going to talk about Son Jarocho music, uh, traditional uh, music of Veracruz, Mexico, specifically the southern part of Veracruz. Um, actually, from this map, you can see um, Veracruz is basically, obviously, there's no lines up here, but it's basically this part, and it goes all the way down. Son Huasteco and Son Jarocho are going to be the prominent um, types of music from there in Veracruz, but Son Jarocho is, is even more specifically from southern Veracruz. It's you know not just Veracruz, it's the southern part. You kind of cross this border and it's it takes it over, right? Um, and so I wanted to talk about um, first of all my, my background is in Balef Corico de Arosa, or Balef Corico. Um, here in Seguin we have Balef Corico de Arosa and it's part of um, Teatro de Artes de Juan Seguin. It's like the main um, promoter of Mexican culture here in Seguin and um, I'm, I'm born and raised here so that was kind of my second home for many many years. And um, I discovered San Jarocho when I lived in Austin. Um, I lived there for about four years, and, and there was already kind of a community there in, tech, in, in Austin that introduced it to me and said, you know, actually, no, man, like, I'm from the Valley, or no, I'm from San Antonio. But we kind of discovered it within the last couple of years, and this is something that's been going on since, you'll, you'll see here, since the 16th century, originally when it, when it came to, to Veracruz. And so with my background in Folklorico, you know, I, I quickly said, all right, well, this is something I gotta check out because it's, I'm just in love with culture in general. And so um, started going to community meetings, community gatherings where the invite was super open and, and people just wanted, wanted you to, to learn about it. And so one of the first things that I learned about it um, was its roots nature. It, it, it's very, very, very rootsy. Folklorico, coming from a Folklorico background, uh, you know, it's very, it's very um, clean and it's very refined, and that's what Bella Fogodico is. It's, it stands for Russian, you know, ballet, the development of, of ballet in Russia. And um, one woman in particular, Amal Amalia Hernandez, kind of spearheaded the Mexican like Fogodico is is our is our cultural like what this is what we grab onto and this is what we want people to know as far as like the cultural presentation of something. Folklorico is what people is what they like to attribute, you know, to right. But so Jarocho is kind of the other end. It's more of you know ballet. No, it's not ballet because ballet is going to be kind of like what we think of as opera. Like it's kind of the nice thing to go check out on a weekend when you have some money, right? And so Jarocho is absolutely rootsy. It is of the people. It is of the campesino, the farm worker, the peasant. It's and, and so in that manner, it, it really reminds me of, you know, old school R&B, in a way, American R&B, because rhythm and blues started where? In the fields, right? Southern, in the southern fields. So I kind of made that connection um, with it. And obviously, like, going to Mexico, I went in, in July to Veracruz, and that was the first thing, you know, that, that I expected to see was, you know, I'm not gonna be checking out formal presentations, I'm gonna be like in the middle of city plazas or at somebody's house where there's free food and like, and just like super inviting, right? So um, that was just a little intro that I wanted to kind of give as far as like why I went the Son Jarocho route, you know, after doing for political for so long. <laughs> um, so I wanted to just take like eight to 10 seconds and just give you a chance to look at this. And to me, I put this up here because this, for me, it tells me what Son Jarocho is, is predominantly about. So just take like eight seconds, and you know, the first thing that really comes comes to me, or that comes to you, um, just think about that in the midst of the presentation. And I just really like the mirror. These cities up here, or all this writing, is actually out of cities, and they are very, very, very important um, in, in the Son Jarocho community. 
and they're on the better boost, obviously. Okay, so I wanted to kind of break down what son jarocho meant literally. Um, son, the word son, um, comes from the idea of like the Catholic Church looking at son jarocho as, wow man, like this isn't church hymnal music, like this is something else, right? And so son jarocho and like son huasteco, that I'll touch on in a little bit, these were kind of the, these were the noise types of music. This was not the traditional this is not what we're hearing in church. And so that, that's what that word, uh, word refers to. And then harocho, it has a, a couple of different meanings. I found something kind of quirky, like charity, red color. I never heard that before, so I just had to put that up there. But um, also, um, if you look at this one here, harocho, it talks about the peasant, right? A name for a peasant in the 18th and 19th century, um, which, because it meant that, you know, uh, kind of had a derogatory meaning to it, right? Then eventually, uh, Harochos just kind of embraced it and said, no, like, we, we are, we, we are Harochos, you know? And just kind of took it as a, as a piece of cultural pride. Um, and also, something interesting that I hadn't really, I hadn't really known before um, was this one here, a sharp pointed arrow in reference to the skin color of the mestizos of the region or to the fact that colonial militiamen were armed with the only ahara a stick or a spear, and this instrument is called a harana. So that connection I hadn't really ever made before. So that was kind of cool. Uh, and then to talk about kind of like the origins and kind of the concept, um, this music was originally introduced uh, in the 16th century is when you know Spanish slaves came over with the Spanish conquistadors. <coughs> and Veracruz, uh, from what I gather, is, the, is, is at least one of the first points of entry for the Spanish conquistadors the doors in the 16th century. And so um, these uh, Afro-Caribbean and, and African slaves were the people that, that, that um, really brought the indigenous, the kind of more rhythmic feel. And since they were coming with Spanish conquistadors who had instruments like the lute, you know, um, and these like really baroque stringed instruments, um, that fusion is what created um, the main idea of San Jarocho. Um, and then in, in Huasteco, uh, wait, what was I trying to say there? Oh, this one, I was trying to say that, you know, if you look at this word, Huasteca, and then you can tie it to these different countries, and then again, um, Son Jarocho, you basically just, when we're talking about Son Jarocho, we're talking about Southern Veracruz, I just wanted to reiterate that. Um, and also, uh, the music's relatively repetitive nature creates a form of improvisation because it's so rhythmic. Because it's so rhythmic, basically, like in a second, I'll play a song and it's really only got four different forms, right? So it's like note, change, 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 and that's it. And that's basically a song. Where the variation comes is the lyrics, right? The lyrics are very, very poetic. So the inf the like uh, the influx and things like that really is going to come from the poetry and how it moves within the song. Um, but these songs are traditional standards. Like I said, you know, it's traditional music. So there are about uh, 80, they said at this point, chronicled 80 traditional sonnets that you'll see, that you'll hear at Fandangos. And then the rest of that, you know, because you might ask, well, so all these people are playing the same 80 songs. Well, eventually, and with generations, people create new songs um, and new lyrics. I'm on a listserv right now where every day there are just dozens and dozens and dozens of people, poets, just writing lyrics, right? And it's a and it's an open forum, like open forum, you know, uh, listserv. So they, the idea is to just keep creating dialogue so that we can continuously change what's being said in the songs, but basically the same idea, you know what I mean? But but the the, the words are are always changing. 